Hello and welcome back to another quick tutorial. Today we will finally be able to link our ECS responses with our individual components. So therefore let's start and continue where we left last time. So first of all we will now make a return that we just received a response from our ECS because we just want to listen to the ECS responses. Therefore the requests are ignored and the responses are returned. As a next step we just print the response out and also compile and quickly validate if it's working with the Godot editor. Therefore we play again and we should see still our message in the errors. Yes and here it is. So far so good. As a next step we need to add two new files. One will be like ECS utils and then a module to export those. So the idea behind this is that we add now a new method in within the ECS utils, which will be used to subscribe individual created nodes to the ECS. So therefore we are going to write the business logic right now. As previously mentioned, this one is just for exporting the ECS utils using a prelude. And the ECS utils will now include actually our subscriber uh, method. So what it should do, it will just add a new node to the ECS node to connect to the particular method as soon as a new response is received. By this approach, we can notify all our child nodes, which should actually listen to kind of those events um, dispatched from the ECS. We return, of course, boolean, a boolean value if it was successful. We pass the ID um, and we also will pass a node just so that we are able to actually call the specific parent um, operations what we want. So, for example, we want to get the root tree node so that we can then start searching for various IDs and extract them so that we can actually get to the ECS node and so on and so on. But first we should add the utils in our model declaration. Otherwise the whole syntax highlighting might not work. Now let's add the imports as needed. And let's start with the implementation. So first we get the, we use the node to get kind of um, a reference that we can query some stuff from, from Godot. As it is an option, we just ensure that it's really existing. And in case of none, we just return a Boolean value for false because then the subscription failed. And if there are some value attached to it, then we just return the value um, in the assigned variable. We do something similar um, with the root or with the tree. So basically we have our node, then we try to get the tree. And then return the tree if it was available or not, based on the sum or none um, pattern matching.
Once we got the root, <coughs> we can actually now try to get the ECS node by try get node S. So the type is ECS node and the idea of it was actually the one here entry scene we will rename now to ECS node and that one is our ECS node. Please keep in mind that the, um, the ECS node you saw now just in the editor is of the type ECS node as well. And then we just resolve here also the pattern matching and return the ECS if it exists. Of course, if the value is unknown or in, I mean none, we just return false as the subscription would fail in that case. In the next step, the magic happens. We actually need to connect um, our new callable, let's say, which will be from the initial node, what we're going to use, um, to the ECS. So therefore, we use the connect method. And we just pass the stringified name of the signal, what we will declare in the ECS. And so that the signal knows what kind of callback or method should be executed, we are now declaring a callback callable, let's say, um, which will then be exactly the string of the matching definition in our um, node, which should subscribe to the ECS. So in that case, handle ECS response. And then we just pass it to our connect. And of course, on receive ECS response, we also need to pass the um, into so that it gets properly converted to the go dot um, struct. And as we did for now, not use the ID, the next step would now be to get from the parent the proper uh, child node based on the ID what we are passing as the argument. So therefore we just use our uh, try get node s And we also just search for a generic uh, node, which is the base inheritance uh, class, let's say. Um, and then we just use it to call our method in case that the ECS dispatched the signal. Back in the ECS node, of course, we need to add our signal now, because otherwise we cannot connect it. Therefore, ensure to on received ECS response is exactly called that way. And then we just pass route and the signal annotation. Don't forget the semicolon at the end. And here we are. 
one step closer to finally be able to subscribe. Back in the player node, we actually need now to ensure that we are defining our method, what we use to connect to the on ECS um, response thingy. So handle new ECS response. And then we just add the lock for now, just to ensure that we receive something at least when we connect the signal um, and the player. As a next step, we need to ensure that we subscribe to it. So therefore I recommend to use the ready method of course it's always very individual and depends on your project but in in this demo i use exactly the ready entry to subscribe to the ecs response and as we said we are going to pass the id the id is actually the node's name itself and we also pass the parent because within the parent we can search everything so that is quite um, needed in that case and convenient and then we just pass those variables to the subscribe to ECS response. We can also add some nice error handling with logs so that we know what's going on. So if we return, uh, get as a result false, then it failed to subscribe. And if it's true, then it was successful. And that our ECS also knows what's going on. I would recommend that every time we subscribe, we also dispatch a new um, event to the ECS, which notifies the ECS that a new component entity, whatever was added. Therefore, we extend the ECS request with a new type or with a new um, event. And of course, we need also to extend the ECS response. Did add new ECS subscriber, for example. So as soon as we connect a new one, we will add new ECS subscriber as a request in direction to the ACS. And then we should actually receive the response from the ECS when it was done. For now, we just keep it very simple. So we just will immediately dispatch the response as well. Um, usually you can have individual systems with some magical things, what you need that they prepare or do. Um, but for now, we just return immediately And of course, back in the ACS, we now need to emit our new signal, what we just defined. So therefore, let's get rid of the go.error in the ECS node. And then let's just use the base, mute, and then emit the signal. I mean, you can use emit signal, which will panic in case that it does not exist, or you use try emit signal, which is kind of more safe, because you can then handle the error as needed. Um, therefore, my recommendation would be clearly try emit signal because I want to avoid any kind of panics. And as a second parameter, there are the arcs, what you are passing to this method. For now, we just keep them as empty array because we will then add the conversion of our response in a go dot proper type very soon. And then we just handle the error 
print it out and the okay is just silent or can be also like if sending was successful that we see also the event what has been sent to the individual go dot nodes in that particular case it's the player Then let's try it out what we see in the editor. Therefore we build it and then let's just start it. Change the errors. Let's try. And we see that we got the new event. We also got the subscriber properly and there was an event emitted. That's also good. The only missing piece was actually that our player did not get it. So therefore we forgot to add the funk on top of it, the funk annotation, because then it's accessible. So don't forget about that one. Then let's build it again. And now we should actually, yeah, first building, and now we should actually see it, that we received also the event in our player. Yes, received response for player, nice. So the basic connection is now working. Now would be nice to also get arguments. Therefore we will introduce a new type. The go.ecs response for example. Heading back to the ECS node, we will then define the type there. So it will be a new struct and this new struct will be called go.ecs response. And part of that one, we are putting, just for test purpose now, an event type, which is a g-string. So when you are using specific methods from Godot, sometimes it's required to have Godot specific um, types in usage, because otherwise it will not work. Therefore, we will now implement a from for Godot um, ECS response, so that we do kind of conversion from an ECS response to this kind of new go.ecs response. And then we just match the value and create this individual go.ecs responses. Of course, you can use also other primitive types like integer values or something. Just for simplification, I decided here to use a string. Because when you are, for example, want to have string payloads, then you also see that you need to convert them to G strings in order to pass them properly. It's very simple types like integers, floats, U sizes and so on. They don't have specific Godot um, types, so that's even easier. And as one of the last steps, we need also to extend the Godot ECS response with some um, derives and also with a Godot uh, declaration. So Godot transparent, that's the first one. And the second one is that we need to derive for this type the Godot convert. And we also derive debug so that we can print out with a Godot error message, for example, what we received. And then we just pass the next as the argument to try to the try emit signal. And please don't forget to call the two variant so that it gets properly converted.
back at the player, we just align the response, go.ecs response, and also let's print it out. And then depends on your type, you can here also have particular pattern matching, whatever you want. Um, so I think that's, it. that's a good introduction for the first things, how to connect actually individual nodes to the ECS um, node and subscribe to the, those events. Then let's try to build it and try it out. And we should now see here actually also the printed out event, what the player received. And yes, it worked as expected. Cool. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry for the long delay for this third part, but I try my best to be up to date. Thank you for watching. See you next time.